Hello and welcome to Heroes Hour. Uh, this is a new game on my channel, uh, which I mean makes sense because it's only been out for a couple of weeks and I am bad at uploading things with any kind of regularity. But it's a game that I've been playing a fair bit since it came out, largely because um, it's a Heroes of Might and Magic clone and I love Heroes of Might and Magic. It basically defined my gaming experience throughout a lot of junior high and high school. Um, I actually, my first part-time job I got specifically to buy a new computer so that I could run Heroes of Might and Magic 3 because at the time I had a 486 which was not going to cut it. And uh, yeah, so it's a genre that I have a lot of history with, I really enjoy, and Heroes Hour I think does a really good job of capturing a lot of what made Heroes of Might and Magic so magical to me when I was younger. That said though, it is a game that, uh, if you believe the Steam forums at least, a fair number of people seem to be struggling with. They um, build up their armies, they go out, they sort of conquer their starting zone, and then they run into the first enemy hero and they get their teeth kicked in. Um, there's some mechanics in it that work quite differently than the Heroes of Might and Magic series, and I think that's what caused people a lot well, it caused some people to bounce off of it. And so I wanted to do this as a sort of general tips and tricks type thing for how to get a good solid start and things to consider that you might not otherwise be thinking of when approaching a game like this. Um, so my plan is I'm going to babble on this screen for a little bit and go through the... Um, the lexicon and stuff like that and talk a bit about general strategy and then I'm going to jump into just a one week long game where I'm looking at uh, how to set yourself up in that first week because I think that's really important to have a strong first week. So let's jump into the lexicon here. So the lexicon is your, um, your, your encyclopedia of all of the different things. And you can go through and look at all the different factions. There's 11 of them total. And I would recommend study this. Um, like, don't dedicate a huge amount of time to it, but at least familiarize yourself with the units, familiarize yourself with the heroes, get a plan for who you might want your, uh, what hero you might want to start with as your primary hero, and develop a plan for how you're going to want to actually build out your your um, faction. Uh, in the case of this playthrough, well, one week playthrough, I'm going to be playing as the Horde. It's a faction I'm pretty familiar with. Um, it seems to be, most of the community seems to think it's kind of at the middle of the power scale, so not too strong, not too weak. Um, I'm going to be, the other thing too, is there are definitely strategies that you can do with this that just break the game. And I'm not going to be doing anything like that. Like if you want to win hardcore on week one, play a tiny map, play as pillar and build the pillars of essence and you can win before the end of the first week uh, on a tiny map. Um, there's some other really broken strategies. Um, some of the stuff with the wild that you can do is pretty insane. Um, some of the lament heroes can do some pretty interesting stuff. Arcane faction. I haven't really played arcane at all, but I've heard it is exceptionally powerful. And uh, even within the horde faction, I would argue that this particular hero here, and we'll take a closer look at her later, is probably broken to the point of abusing the game. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing any of that. I'm going to be playing it as as I would consider the developers intend it to be played. I'm going to be using the strengths of my hero, but not in such a way that I'm trying to deliberately break the game. So when we look at the Horde faction, um, these are our units, and they basically go uh, tier 1, tier 2-ish, tier 3, 4, 5, 6. Um... And the most of these, you'll notice, you'll have two different options. You can pick between these once a week. So you can either pick the Furies and the Harpies, which give you a flying unit that is 
a pretty effective little, great for taking out archers and stuff like that, getting into your enemy's back ranks. Or you can take the Goblin Gunner and who, slash Grenadier, who is a ranged unit and quite an effective one, especially once you mass them up. Likewise here, you've got the Centaurs who are a ranged unit, or you've got the Raiders who are uh, little goblins on wolves. These ones, the Shamans, you only get Shamans, you don't get to pick. Um, these guys are a caster ranged unit that can also heal your troops, which is incredibly useful. Um, then you've got the trolls and the blood warpers. Uh, trolls are a ranged unit that throws big rocks. And the blood warpers are a, um, a melee unit that can eventually end up, um, well, they feed off the deaths of those around them and uh, resurrect friendly creatures. And then last up, you've got the Cyclops, who is basically what you would expect. He bashes things over the head with a big club and does a very good job at doing that. Um, so familiarize yourself with the, with the faction you, you're playing to a certain extent, at least, just through this. And then when the time comes to actually create a new game, I would suggest uh, this map here, Constellation. It's a tiny map for a first game, but what I like about it is it has that little neutral spot in the middle. So two realms locked in rivalry, un traverse the underground to wipe the opponent out. So you'll need to travel through this underground zone here in order to reach your opponent. Now, in my case, um, I'm going to be playing as the Horde, and um, this is probably one of the a, a very important early decision you need to make is decide who your starting hero is going to be and build a strategy and build a plan around that hero take a look at their skills you can hover over each of their skills it tells you what they do so take a look at the the heroes and figure out how you're going to develop your faction so in the case of this one like i said if you really want to just win a game and be very very powerful i'd seriously consider uh liara liara however you pronounce that this this lady here um Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is you'll see how they're divided into two different categories. Basically, these ones at the top here are going to be your might-focused heroes, and the ones at the bottom are going to be your magic-focused heroes. So if I go back and I pick a different um, like order, these guys are generals, they are might-focused, these guys are priests, they are um, magic-focused, um, even, well, Arcane's actually kind of a bad example because they're both... Um, but like Decay, these guys are uh, basically Death Knights and very much Might focused, whereas these guys are more like Necromancers and um, Caster focused. So bear that in mind. Generally speaking, um, I mean, it, both are equally viable. It's just sort of a question of the strategy that you want to do. Um, I would generally say might heroes are a bit easier to get a handle on. You don't need to worry about the spell casting quite so much. But in the case of Liara, uh, it doesn't really matter because she has the way that her skills are set up. Uh, you don't actually even really need to worry about casting very many spells. Now, what do I mean by that? So Liara's basic ability is so the, they unlock as trees. Uh, and Liara's basic ability is archery. Uh, gives ranged units, basically makes ranged units more killy. Um, that's good because she has troll mastery. Trolls are ranged units. They throw big rocks. So troll mastery is going to get you free trolls. They just show up in your army uh, and you get a little bit more than one per week per rank. Um, and it also gives them extra health and damage for each rank. So, mastery, very good. 
Champion increases the health and damage of elite creatures in the hero's army, so creatures with power 9 or more by 20% for the first rank and 10% for each later rank. These guys are power 12, so that synergizes there. So if you do nothing but take those three skills and get as many trolls and their upgrade, the avalanchers, as you possibly can, you will stomp over everything. Um, you will just crush everything before you in a torrent of rocks. You throw some goblins out in front to use as chaff and slow the enemy down, and you just throw rocks at them until they die. Very, very powerful strategy. You'd have a tough time losing a game. Um, I'm not going to be playing her, though. I'm going to be playing as Tobruni, this guy, who has a slightly different strategy. And this is where picking your hero becomes really important, and building your strategy around that. So Tobruni, while Liara here focuses on these powerful elite units, Tobruni's big focus is on garbage units. He is he he relies on hordes, hordes and hordes and hordes of troops, which is another powerful strategy. Um, but I would consider this to be almost broken. I think this, if you're effective with it, can be very powerful. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think I'd call this broken. Um, so let's take a look at his skills. So we've got Legion which increases the health of all creatures by five and damage of all creatures by plus one. So these voodoo here, which are the upgrades to my little goblins, have 35 health and deal four damage. One rank a legion means they have 40 health and five damage. Two ranks, 45 health, six damage, and so on. He also has goblin mastery, which recruits goblins into his army over time. You'll notice he gets 14 per week per rank, whereas Liara gets uh, one and a quarter per week per rank. So he's going to get a ton of goblins just sort of showing up. Uh, with one rank of mastery, he'll be getting two goblins a day. Uh, as this levels up, you'll get more and more. The 5% health and damage isn't quite as useful with the goblins uh, because their base stats are lower, like 5% of 35 or 40 is a lot less than 20% uh, of 135. So, um, the percentage increase isn't quite as good. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. So, uh, 5% of 135. So, the percentage isn't, increase isn't quite as awesome. But, realistically, it gets you free goblins. It beefs them up. It gives them a few extra hit points every time you pick one up. And, eventually, it does start to snowball for them. Uh, he also has Bloodlust, which means that when he picks this up, as his goblins die, which they will, the other goblins become more powerful. Okay. Offense increases attack speed. Hitting things faster and harder is a good way to minimize casualties. Your enemy cannot hurt you if they're dead, so the faster you can make them dead, the fewer casualties you'll take. Uh, armor increases the health of units. Um and also lets, gives them a bit of ranged resistance. Also awesome. Again, the percentage increase isn't fantastic for these guys, but you're not only going to be running around with goblins. You're going to have other ar units in your army, so armor is definitely going to help with that. Swarming. Another great one. It creates duplicates of your goblins. I, I, I mean, okay. Uh, and this one, anytime a creature dies, it creates a little vengeful spirit, and blood warping is another extremely powerful ability that basically lets little units transform into better units. Uh, you can blood warp goblins into trolls. You can blood warp goblins into... Oops. You can blood warp goblins into um, your centaurs and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, very, very useful ability, especially for rounding out and filling out your higher tier units. That, yeah. And then last up, he has healing, which is always good. Uh, recruitment, which increases the number of goblins that will appear every turn. And then if you're playing a really long match, this is another very viable thing to do, which is pick up Dragon King and Devour.
because what you can do then is you'll slowly get free dragons, you devour them, and it boosts his overall combat stats. Um, realistically, another way you can easily break the game is look for heroes that have Dragon Master and Devour up high in their skill tree. Unlock it early, get dragons, eat them, and um, you're, you will very quickly end up with an unstoppable army because it boosts, Devour boosts your attack and defense, which is a percentage increase to the hit points and damage of all your units. And the more powerful a creature you devour, the bigger the boost, so you make dragons and then eat them. Make dragons, eat them, make dragons, eat them, and eventually you can end up with ridiculously high combat stats. So, with that, I think I'm going to jump to the game here. Um, there will be a bit of an awkward cut, because this is actually the second time I've recorded this intro. Um, I didn't like the way the first one turned out, so I re-recorded it, but I had already jumped into the game and played through that week, and so I'm going to be editing the two of them together. Um, but, yeah. Uh, all this, starting with this hero, starting on that map, everything else is the same, and I am playing on challenging. Uh, I find challenging is a good difficulty for me. Um, I like it. Uh, if you are struggling, there's nothing wrong with kicking it down to easy, but if I can do it on challenging, you should be able to do it on uh, normal or easy. And yeah, with that, I will see you in the game. Okay, sorry. Just uh, loaded back in here with the hero that I actually wanted to use. Now, um, when it comes to turn one recruitment and what to do on your very first turn, there's a couple of strategies, and it's going to kind of depend on the layout of your town. Now, if you look here, you'll see some of these have these little connection lines between them. That means that I can't build, say, the Guild of Mages here without having previously built the Marketplace. I can't build the Spirit Altar without having previously built the Guild of Mages. So in order to get these guys, I'll have to build the Marketplace, Guild of Mages, and then the Spirit Altar. This is going to be a priority for me because the Shaman is a healer, so um, keeping my units alive is good. Now, there are two kind of strategies. Um, Probably the most effective is on turn one, build a tavern. You can either build a tavern or you can build your first uh, sort of upgrade or second tier unit building. I would say go with a tavern. And the reason I say go with a tavern is because what you can do then, and again, this is something where it's controversial. Do you wait for the champion statue or not? Um, Champion statue lets you get bodyguard on your heroes, which can be very useful, but especially on the first two heroes, it's not essential. Or the first couple of heroes, it's not essential, because you can use them for other stuff. You don't necessarily need them to go out and fight battles and stuff like that for you. So I'm going to recruit two heroes. So these guys are going to be my scouts. And they are going to be uh, my source of free troops. And we'll dump all the troops onto my main hero here. And uh, we also need to recruit all my goblins. Clean out the recruitment pool. It annoys me how much those two look alike. Uh, but this is my primary hero, so now what I'm going to want to do is I send my two scout heroes out to scout, see what I want to fight. Uh, you really want to be taking fights as quickly as possible, pick up free resources as you come across them. Uh, so up here I've got a gold mine, that is useful, 500 gold a day. Um, it's going to it's not going to be an easy fight. Um, one of the nice things is unless you are on um, impossible difficulty or hardcore difficulty, it will tell you the difficulty, of the, a general idea of the difficulty of the fight. So you can see those guys are moderate, that guy's impossible, and will pr likely stay impossible for a little while. Um, but let's go do a bit more scouting, pick up some free wood. 
pick up some free gold, pick up some free ore. Oh, and down here you can see I've got a recruitment building here, so I'll be able to pick that up next turn. Because um, I, oh well, if it's unguarded, I'll be able to pick it up next turn. Okay, so for a first fight, kind of got two options here. I could either go for the chest and the gold, or I could go for a sawmill. Um, I might do the chest and the gold first, because that might get me some more experience, which will get me more levels. And early on, levels are very valuable. So, and also, these guys are kind of trash. Um, I'll show you once we get in there. Now, an important thing to note, too, is you notice I have rank 1 in Legion, right? And if I hover over these guys, it says 35 health, 4 damage. Now, once I get into the fight... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them off. I'm going to have them come around because I'm going to send them off to go and mess up those guys. Put these guys out in front. And... Um... I'm actually going to go like this just to... Because I want to try and preserve the Voodoos, because um, if he has Voodoos in his army, once I get the Goblin Mastery, they'll spawn more Voodoos. If I don't have Voodoos, they'll spawn more Goblins, which are just less powerful. Uh, but yeah, now you'll notice if I hover over these guys, my Voodoos have 40 health and 6 damage. So that's um, Legion at work there. put you down there. It's no, nowhere near as effective on the higher tier units like these shamans. They've gone from 101 health to 106 health. With the high tier units, you generally want to look at percentage increases, but Legion is very, very effective on these kind of garbage trash tier units. So, first things first, we're going to send them off there. And... We're going to charge through and get my hero into their back line as well. And I'm stomping all over these guys. I took two goblin casualties. That's the kind of fights I like to see in the early game. So yeah, two casualties for these guys. And again, that was just because as you get more familiar with the game, you'll start to recognize what units are good and what units are garbage. And a bunch of spawnlings and some cannoneers are going to not do well. So first level up is very important. Um, making sure that you start focusing your build right away is extremely useful. So first pickup I'm going to do is going to be this Goblin Mastery because that's going to start getting more voodoos into my army right away. Uh, now, I'm going to go pick this up. Oh, it's only gold or mercury. We'll go with the mercury. Uh, and then... Can't remember. What do I need for buildings more? I believe I'm going to want more wood than gold. Oh, or wood than ore. Oh, maybe not. Uh, dead forest is only ore. Ore. Okay, so we're going to go for the ore mine first. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is leave resources lying around. Don't pick them up with your main hero. You want to be using your movement points for your main hero to go as fast as possible. The exception being treasure chests, uh, because treasure chests will oftentimes give experience, which you really only want your primary hero picking up, at least in the early game. Once you start leveling up a secondary, then it can make a bit more sense to have the, have the treasure chests go to them. But we're going to take this fight as well. So we're going to grab ourselves the ore mine. This one might be a little bit tougher. The militia are a little bit scarier than the, um, the garbage that they had before. The, the crossbowmen in particular can be a little bit... A little bit scary but we're still just going to mass up and do a similar strategy where I try to 
Oh, I won't be able to charge my hero is the one downside. Uh, his special ability charge only works once a day, which is sad. But we're still going to rush him down. I'm going to get the harpies in behind to deal with his archers. Uh, I might lose some harpies here. The archers, or the marksmen rather, are nastier than those cannoneers. Uh, cannoneers are bad if they can get you bogged down, but they fire very slow. So if you can close the distance, they're, they're um, considerably weaker. Um, the other possibility here that I might be able to do is actually pull back and make use of some of these choke points. Because if you can fight around a choke point, it forces the enemy to come to you a bit more piecemeal. And um, yeah, so I'm going to switch over to defend here now and we'll start this battle. We're just going to pull some of these guys back, pull back, pull down. And switch to attack. Oh, why am I getting elementals? Weird. I was not expecting elementals. Okay. Oh, actually, one Harpy casualty. Nice. Good. These are the kind of fights you want to take early on. Um, and early on in the game, a lot of it comes down to positioning. Can't quite make it up to him this turn. That's okay, though. So, that's first turn. So, I've cleared the Obelisk, which is good. Uh, I'm actually going to send her back next turn to pick that up. Um... I got a gold thing to pick up, and I took a grand total of two goblin casualties and one harpy as a casualty, so nice. I, I, I can live with a dead harpy and two dead goblins on turn one. Um, so let's end the turn. Okay, so that's listed as another easy fight. Let's go pick up the obelisk. It's important to grab the obelisk early because it spawns these little things that you can then pick up to get a clearer picture. Like right now, if I look at this, there's bleh, what the heck. Um, it looks vaguely like, I don't even know what building that would be. Is it this? Could be the pyre, the flame lake thing. I don't know though. Um, so let's continue our scouting. So every time you pick up one of these, it's going to clear, it'll show you more of the map. Um, oh, we got some sulfur there. Go grab the flame lake. So these are always handy to grab as soon as you can. And a couple of things you can do with them. Now, I picked up the ore mine, but I'm going to use the wood to upgrade. You know what? I'm going to leave for now. I want to build first. So my first building, uh, I'm going to do the dead forest. And I'm going to grab goblin gorillas. So uh, when you're picking these up, you have to choose. And in this case... I went for the Goblin Gorillas because I'd like some range in my army. Um, actually... I might actually switch to Harpies for very early on. So we're going to max out recruitment of Harpies. And uh, one other thing that's important to realize you can do is move units without a hero. Just going to transfer them right into my army, and then we're going to go mess up some flame jumpers. So again, similar strategy here, except this time I have a lot more uh, harpies, so this fight's going to be even easier. And I'm not even going to bother...
And again, once the Harpies get in there, it's all over. Archers do not do well in close combat. Um, I'm still perplexed as to how I'm getting those... Yeah, no casualties. Um, now, another level up. I could go Bloodlust. Um, Bloodlust can be very useful, but offense is going to just increase the attack speed of my units. And you're always going to... Basically, the faster you can kill the other guys, the less damage you're going to take is my philosophy. This relies on your troops dying, and that's totally worth picking up because your troops are going to die, but in terms of being able to punch through and do as much damage as possible as quickly as possible, I'm going to go with offense, and then I'm going to go pick that up. So that's listed as hard, that's listed as impossible. Let's go take an easy fight here against some swamp archers or something like that. Swamp arrows. Um, realistically, again, <laughs> if this is not becoming a theme. Doo -doo -doo. Actually, I'm going to put these guys up on here just because they've got a clearer path. So right in that way. So they got a single volley off before I closed the distance. Um, unsupported archers are not going to perform terribly well. Hey, I lost a harpy though. Oh well, two harpies. Interesting. I took more casualties than I was expecting there. And we got another level up. So at this point, I'm gonna do bloodlust. And then the plan will be, next level will be another Legion, and then some more Mastery. Or do I want to do the Legion 2 now? Actually, I might do that. Again, just direct increase of survivability. It's worthwhile to pick up camps with your primary hero, too. Um, they, they increase your movement. I mean, temporarily increase your movement, but they do bump up your movement. Uh, and now, grab that gold. I'll send her kind of behind him to pick up some of this other stuff. And in your case down here, now that I've built my stuff, I'm going to do a quick upgrade of this. And then I'm going to buy I might not clean them up completely, but, oh no, I will. They're cheap enough. Uh, that's just going to get me archers. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to go for the harpies, is because I'm like, oh, I got archers down here. I don't need the goblin gunners. Um, so, next turn, he's going to go bring those up to my primary hero. And continue to plan out my build. I think my next building is going to be the Banner of Champions. This is a unique one to the Horde, and I'll talk about it next turn after we roll the turn here. Okay, so let's go in. Uh, one other thing I always suggest to do is at least look and consider building before you uh, fight, because sometimes you can get more troops, or sometimes you can get more, like, it, unlock the infirmary before a fight. That's always a good plan. Um, and likewise, unlock the Banner of Champions before a fight, because this is how Horde units upgrade. Um, most other units, you actually have to buy the second tier of the building, so the Shantytown would upgrade to something, the Dead Forest would upgrade to something else, uh, and that would give you your more advanced version of the unit. In the case of the Banner, in the case of the Horde, you use the Banner of Champions, and then they upgrade through combat. So I'm going to pick that up. And then I'm going to see, I can totally do this. Okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that, but I will be able to pop the, the birds at least there. And we'll transfer those units over to him. 
And now we've got another easy fight. So, neither of these are ranged, and I have ranged units. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy back. Actually, we're going to deploy back down here. And... I'm going to actually soak with the harpies. Uh, they're pretty low health, too. I'm going to soak with... I'm going to soak with the voodoos because now I have the upgrade thing. And I'm going to position my hero up here to try and run as a distraction. You can use your hero as a distraction. It can be a very valuable thing to do on the tactical combat end of things because your hero is immortal. Like, if he gets knocked down to zero health, he just retreats back here and regenerates and then joins the fight again. Uh, so he can be very valuable. Even if it's a spellcaster or something like that, it can be worthwhile to throw them off somewhere that they, they're they basically intended to get into a fight. Um, and even if it kills them, you don't actually lose anything. There's very little in Heroes Hour that is truly expendable. Uh, your heroes in a fight are well and truly expendable. Um, they will come right back. And you suffered no ill effects for them getting knocked out of a fight for a little while. So, um, yeah, let's start the fight. Okay, I'm on defend, so we're going to pull everybody back. And we're going to send you in. Do I want to charge? Now we attack. So you see my hero's keeping these fighters all tied up. Well, everybody else kills the goblins. And then my hero gets knocked out. But by then, the birds are all dead. So I'm taking more casualties here. I forgot to build the champion statue. That was stupid. <laughs> I'm talking about how, oh, you need to make sure that you upgrade stuff first. but And then I forget to do it. So let's build a banner of champions. So now I'll be able to upgrade my units. And can I take this fight? It says challenging. I don't know if I want to do a challenging. Ooh, salt armor is a very useful spell for him to have picked up. If we look at salt armor, so his charge is, like I said, it's a one day cooldown. You just charge in a specific de de direction and it does a bunch of damage to the things he charges through. And then he fights in the middle of a pack of enemies. So very good for running distraction. Um, only works once a day, though. Salt armor um, increases their health by 10% and gives them protection against spells. So this works a bit better on higher tier units. Uh, and let's face it, this guy's a terrible spellcaster anyhow. He has a knowledge of one and a spell power of one. Um, it's... it's he, he, he's not a smart man. Uh, he is very good at hitting things, though. Um, I still don't think I want to take this fight, uh, because those boars, um, I believe they are the ones that explode if you, when you kill them, and explodey things kill goblins quite effectively. So, I think... I think, I think, I want to go pick up a camp and explore a bit more. What do we have here? Rally flag. Marching and morale. Fair enough. You have fun with that. Realistically, this is just a little bit of XP. It can be worthwhile to keep some of these around for when you start wanting to level a second hero, because they're an easy way to get a little bit of XP for them. I don't think I'm going to be using either of these two as my secondary. Uh, I would like to wait until I am bodyguard, um, but we shall see. Let's grab 
grab that. Okay, so... It's gonna be by this temple, chapel place that I haven't found yet. So it's probably gonna be off in this direction somewhere. So, with that in mind, let's explore off in that direction. Ah, there it is. That's a very... Oh, we'll get to that next turn, but that's a very valuable building to pick up. Um, gonna do a diversion to pick up that treasure chest. And... Run the turn. Oh, the neutral hero is already only moderate. Emerald Band, plus one Knowledge or three Sulfur. I'm going to get the Band, just because having a little bit more mana is good. Okay, so unfortunately, judging by this, it looks like the treasure is going to be like right there, so I'm going to have to kill that. So all of these are challenging right now. Let's go in and see what we can build to try and change that. Could I get... Centaurs all the way down there, I wonder. I might be able to. Yeah, they could reach him and then he could reach there. And then I'd be able... This is a priority. So this Palace of the Horde, every faction has one of these. The palace, basically, whatever zone it's in, it's tied to that town. And it gives you 200... 250 gold a day and increases the number of creatures created each week by 20% and increases the defense of your heroes. So that's a really important structure to try and take before the end of week one because it is going to boost your recruitment. Um, you'll notice I'm kind of skipping over some of the like the sulfur and the crystal mine and stuff like that. The gold mine is a big priority but um, not as essential. Okay, I can't reach it this turn anyhow. So, actually that works out well because I can do the Nomad Plaza this turn. Infirmary next turn. An infirmary is an incredibly valuable building to take, especially once you start trying to take more challenging fights because it's a, it keeps half your troops alive. And... Fewer dead troops is a good thing. So let's build the Nomad Plaza for now. And... I feel like I would rather... I find the raiders tend to die very quickly. They have a tendency to charge out ahead of everybody else and get themselves killed. Um, so in the interest of keeping troops alive, I'm going to take centaurs. And then we're going to recruit them. And we are going to do a hero chain. So you join them. And then you go join him. And then start going back up. Now, as for you, grab the sulfur, grab the mercury. much else for you to do at the moment. So... I guess we'll run you back in the direction of the town. Um, because then I could probably use him to pick up spare resources around here. Oh, actually, he's got uh, sulfur and crystal, whatever. I don't need it at the moment. Anyhow, now we're just going to advance here. So this is going to be a tough fight. Um, liches are no joke, um, those things beside the liches are also no joke, the flame jugglers are a bit of a joke, and yeah, anyhow, we'll see how it goes. So, let's end our turn. Now, important priority, get the infirmary built, because, okay, now, when it comes to these, none of these are too fantastic. Um, like, none of the ones that I came up with here are super fantastic. Um, let's 
Like, this isn't terrible later on in the game when you got a bunch of heroes running around. Terrible for the early game, though. Um, like, realistically, the XP required to go... Like, I mean, it gives each of those guys a thousand experience. Woo. Who cares? Um, I think they'd even give him even less. So, I think long-term what's going to pay off the best is going to be the Grand Bazaar. Um, just because this is a small map, so I'm not going to have a ton of markets. And being able to get that uh, a better exchange rate is valuable. Um, after this, now that I've got... So this is what I'd consider to kind of be the core. Try to get your first three units unlocked. The infirmary, the tavern. Some people say get the champion statue before recruiting any additional heroes, but I'd say wait till week two. Again, that's kind of a personal preference thing. The key is to have a plan. Now, my plan going forward is going to be to grab... I want to get the spirit altar, but I need the guild of mages. So with that in mind, I think what I'm going to do instead is probably do the... I might actually go for Center of the Horde, try and get more money before uh, the week rolls. But let's see how this goes. So this is listed as a moderate fight, um, which is normally something I kind of try to avoid super early on. But I think this one's worth it if it's going to get me the extra units and a lot of my casualties are going to end up getting brought back anyhow. So let's charge in, see how this goes. Okay, so Cryomancer is quite powerful. The Lich is extremely powerful. The Flame Jugglers are a joke. The nice thing is most of this is ranged units. So I can probably really do a good job messing them up by simply charging. Uh, I'm going to get my hero in as fast as I possibly can. Um, I'm actually going to break them up, put them on the flank, have these guys go down the middle. I'll send off a batch of goblins to tie those guys up. I am going to take losses here. It's just a question of how bad those losses are. So... Let's go. And actually, I'm going to slow this down to a quarter speed. Get in there. Get in there. Get around the flank. And in your case, you are going to charge. And... So yeah, you can see I take an obscene number of casualties. However, so sorry, this is the only way I can really pause. Oh no, I can right click to pause. So you can see I've lost these goblins, but I've also gained five voodoos. I've also lost two centaurs, but gained two of their equine guards, lost a harpy, but gotten a fury. So these aren't actually losses. They're just transformations into more powerful units. So realistically, what I've lost is one voodoo and um, uh, eight um, goblins. So that's not terrible. Um, I'm going to get salt armor up here on my front line. Yes. Get salt armor up here just to toughen them up a bit. Try to keep them as alive as possible. Uh, it's also going to give them better resistance against the magic attacks. There, we got it. Okay, so let's take a look at casualties here. 17 goblins is significant. Well, 10 goblins, really. Uh, one voodoo. And other than that, no casualties. So, 10 goblins. But, if I exit out here... Oh, I did get a level up. Nice. Um, so now I'm going to recruit that, or pick up that, to get additional... Oh, actually, because we're... Will I get another... Will I get another level up? I could just fight for XP. 
get another level up, because I, ideally I'd love to get this before the week rolls, right? Because, hey, 20% savings is 20% savings. Um, I think, though, I'm going to do ma mastery for this one. And then do royalty. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay. Oh, and he's almost hit level 5 already. Nice. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. But now, if we look here, you see, I got four of those goblins back. So, realistically, it cost me six goblins. And we'll just... Oh, and another shaman. Nice. Um... I actually really need to get him a single level up. That needs to be a priority. Because if I can start getting a couple of Cyclopses, that would be incredibly useful. Honestly, it might be worth unloading the army onto him to send him into this fight. It's the easiest fight here. Moderate challenging, moderate hard challenging. It's really important to synergize your skills as best you can. Um, we're going to try this. It might not end well. It should be okay, though. It's not like he's got a... Oh. Transfer the wrong way. Let's do this. I'm going to take more casualties in this now. Uh, it's still listed as moderate, though. But let's see how it goes. Okay, so we have a ranged unit, so let's put that, or a couple ranged units, so let's fire them down there. Um, and again, similar strategy. Flank around the side, you guys charge in. Go. Mess them up. And let's do a charge. So yeah, I'm losing a lot of goblins here, which is really too bad. But I am going to be getting reinforcements soon. And I think it's worth it to get him this level up. Okay. So, he gets Cyclopses for free now. And, I don't know, we'll also uh, give him Midas Touch. Sure, why not? Okay. But again, you can see, even though I took a fair number of casualties there, I got a bunch of them back. Again, this is really how... You, you you need to be really careful about minimizing casualties. <laughs> so the yeah, um, but let's see. We built. Everybody's moved. We're good to go. He's listed as moderate. That's listed as challenging. Send you back to pick up some more. Um, ooh. Plus one offense skill, huh? That'd actually be kind of handy. It'd save me a uh, upgrade point to pick up level two armor. Okay. 
Or do I fight the hero? I think I fight the hero. Cool. Actually, he's got Dragon King and Devour. Um, he's not going to be throwing anything too nasty at me. I should be good to take that fight. Uh, that's another important thing to remember when you're fighting heroes, is it does show you their their abilities at the top. And sometimes those abilities can make them much, much more difficult than you would otherwise expect. So let's go in and see what we can build in town. Um, I think for this turn... I've got two turns left. Do I just go for gold? I think I just go for gold. Yeah, we'll do that. We might get another town level up out of this. Nope, not quite. No, we need one more building to level up the town again. Okay, let's go do this fight. Can we reinforce? Go reinforce. In you charge. Okay, so this is listed as easy now. Um, those guys are kind of decent. The bear guard are going to die to harpies. And I'll actually throw them up there just because I'm running a little bit low on goblins. That should be a problem that corrects itself as soon as the turn rolls, though. Now, in terms of his abilities, uh, you can see he's got the Dragon King, he's got Devour. Um, he might have a couple of spells he can cast, but I'm not super worried about them. So, let's just fight. Okay, you guys get over here. Now, charge right into the middle of them. So, casualties are pretty good so far. Okay, so lost no harpies because it turned into a fury. Lost two goblins, one voodoo. I'll take that. And that gets me my royalty skill. That is good. Plus one combat skill. Treasure chest with money. So. Oh, he's even tougher in a fight now. Cool. Do I take this fight too? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Sorry, I bumped the microphone there. If you heard a thump, I apologize. Okay. Well, we built there. Let's just move around, pick up stuff. Oh, I forgot about the treasure. Whoops. Heh. <laughs> Dope. Uh, there it is. Found the treasure. Found the treasure. Oh, nice. Bit of a waste, but not the end of the world. Uh, okay, so if we look at this now, we're starting to get pretty beefy. Uh, plus four defense is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, that's going to significantly buff up, especially some of our tougher units. Generally speaking, attack and defense, bumping those up, helps your elite units, whereas something like Legion helps the, the chaffy units. Both help, but... Um, each point of defense increases by 3%, so that's an 18-point increase to health, which is going to help these guys. 
but it's going to bump those guys up by a lot more. Um, so this is before the Legion skills factored in. It does factor in your attack and defense, I believe. Because, yeah, they start out base at 30 health, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a little weird how it does the math sometimes, but as a general rule, that's what you want to do. So let's go take this fight. And it should be a pretty easy one. Break off the Furies. Send them around to mess up the Swamp Archers. Okay, let's go mess them up. Toss Salt Armor on them. Just to... Got it. Again, lost some voodoos, but as you take these tougher fights, you kind of expect that. So, one more fury, lost some voodoos. Now, we do have another level up. Cool. I'm going to take healing. It'll just bring back 20% of my units, which again, because I take so many casualties amongst the goblins. Uh, okay, so now we've got plus one offense skill, which is awesome. We've got the knowledge, defense, and the combat skill. So we actually have plus two combat skill. That's He's actually turning into quite a beast himself. Okay. Any more stuff to pick up around here? Oh, yeah. And... Um, okay, let's end the turn. Pick up some of that junk. And now, let's go mess these guys up. So, my way out is through here, and one of the other reasons I kind of like this map is because it does it does take a little bit longer to break out of your starting area, but it also takes longer for the AI to break out. So you have a little bit more time to build up um, than you would on some of the other maps. Um, but for now, let's go mess up these boars. Again, we're going to ruin the day of some flame jugglers. Toss these guys in the back, put you there. Start the battle. Okay. Again, lost a couple goblins, but it is to be expected. And you'll notice I'm starting to become a little bit more flippant about my goblin casualties. And that's because at this point... Ooh, is that something I want to do? Do I want to fort? I can totally fort. Okay, let's... F so, last turn here. Um, you kind of have two options. Or I have two options. I can either build a fort which will just straight up spam out more goblins by a significant number. Uh, or I could build the center of the horde and get more money, but I have lots of money right now. I'm not super worried about my uh, week two recruitment. So I'm gonna build that and I'm gonna get myself an extra 27 goblins next turn. And so you can see now I'm getting 42 of those a week, plus the free spawn ones that he gets. Um, and I, so I'm moving him up in this direction because I'm going to take that gold mine next turn, too. Um, yeah. Not much else for you to do. It's kind of barren around here. So actually, what I might do... 
start schlepping you back this way. Oh, you have another. It's handy to just keep an eye out for these every now and then because, yeah, she free spawns, free spawns shamans, which is handy. Um, but yeah, I'm happy for the end of week one. This is a pretty good initial expansion, I think. So now you can see in my home base, I've just completely recruited, replenished my army. Now, this should be an easy fight. Huzzah. He still hasn't gotten himself a Cyclops, but that's to be expected. So, that is turn one for Hero's Hour. Uh, you can look down here. Even that's just already down to a challenging. And that's before I recruit more Flame Jugglers. Um, next up, I'm going to be building... Oh, I could probably aim for the Blood Altar or pick up the Mage's Guild. Um, yeah. So that's Hero's Hour. Uh, week one how to kind of how i would suggest efficiently clearing your starting area wasn't using any horribly broken strategies or anything like that just playing as smart as i could trying to minimize losses picking fights that i could win trying to continually grow my army and it works pretty well um again uh, like I said, if I can do this on challenging, you can do it on easy. So if you're struggling, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I will admit I am a bit more familiar with this faction than some of the others, but uh, similar principles apply across the board. Like realistically, everything is a zero sum game. You want to be gaining units faster than you are losing them. You want the losses that you are taking to be among units that are relatively easy to replace. Um, and yeah, yeah. So hopefully that helps, uh, if you stuck with me this long and yeah, thanks for joining me. Cheers.